If you've ever wanted to install a pulley on a shaft, but unlike this one, it didn't have a keyway, then stick around and I'm going to show you how to do just that with a taper lock pulley. Also, stay tuned for a peek at the assembled cutter head. Now the way these things work is the inner bushing has a split in it. It's machined at a taper and so is the pulley. You can see it only going one way because this side of the pulley is smaller. And when you slide it in this side, it only goes in so far. Because of that taper, right there it gets tight and you use the bolt holes here, line them up with the corresponding holes here and pull it down inside, which will force this split closed, clamping it down on the shaft. Now this one does have a key cut in it, a keyway cut into it. But um, we're not going to use that because we have no keyway on our shaft. And believe me, a taper lock will hold much tighter than a key will anyway. So step one for me is going to be degreasing everything. I can't imagine you'd want to have any sort of lubrication in there. Maybe you do. I don't know. Personally, I don't want any in there. So I'm just going to hit it with some brake clean, get it cleaned off. Go ahead and remove um, all the oil from the shaft as well before we do this. First thing you want to do is slide your pulley on, making sure that your bolt holes are facing out, and then put the bushing on. Now I've got to figure out what depth I want this at, and honestly I think I'm going to slide it all the way until it bottoms out against this uh, step in the shaft here. Once you've got your pulley on where you want it, you've got your bushing in, you've got your screw started, you're going to evenly tighten them. You don't want to get this cockeyed. You want to just go a little bit at a time on each one. And why I'm not using a ratcheting wrench or a socket is beyond me, honestly. But I'm not. And you're just going to keep alternating between the two. Just pulling that bushing deeper into the pulley. That's all there is to it. I'm going to have to find a way to hold my engine still so I can actually get these torqued down. There is a torque spec. For these, I couldn't tell you what it is off the top of my head. I'm going to look it up just to, just to make sure I get that tight enough. But you can see, there's absolutely no way I can pull this off. I mean, well, there you go. There's the end, end plane of the crankshaft right there. There's no way in the world I can get this pulley off of here, and I don't think those bolts are even tight enough yet. They're close, but not quite. If you're doing something similar, putting a pulley in a smooth shaft, small engine, here's a quick tip how you can hold your crankshaft still. Remove the spark plug, get the piston about halfway up, and then put a soft nylon rope down inside the spark plug hole, filling the cylinder full of that rope. Then grab your crankshaft, turn it the direction you're going to be turning your wrench until it stops. What happens is the piston comes up, contacts that rope, and can't make it to the top of its travel because of the rope. That will allow you to torque your bolts. Then you can just turn the motor backwards a little bit, easily pull the rope out, put the spark plug back in, and you're ready to go. Hopefully this is helpful to you guys. I mean, any shaft you want that's smooth, you can get a taper lock pulley for. They're readily available at Surplus Center, McMaster Car. There's plenty of places online that you can buy these things and uh, get yourself out of a jam. I almost forgot, if you ever want to take this off, all you do is take the bolts out, put them in the other two bolt holes, and that will pull the bushing right out of the center of the pulley. You don't have to worry about it rusting in place or getting seized on the shaft. Just swap the bolt holes and this thing will come right off. It's super easy, super convenient for a later removal. Well guys, I was really hoping to get some of the framework built up in this video and get a lot of progress made, but due to the coronavirus and the quarantine, uh, my local steel yard can't get any steel in until next week so um, I guess we're just stuck with the parts I have on hand at home so hopefully uh, this will uh, tide you over until I get some steel thanks for watching well here she is in all her glory that clicking sound you hear is the cutter heads I didn't fully tighten them in there because these are lock nuts and I didn't want to wear out the nylon and then by taking them on and off a couple times I still gotta paint this so it's gonna come back apart yet but I just had to see it fully assembled so this thing here ended up weighing about 20 pounds. It's a little more than I originally thought it would be, but um, I was going for mass and speed, and I definitely got mass. So we'll see now if I can get this thing moving at the speed I'm wanting to get it moving at. 
Um, we're going to run two tests tonight. I'm going to see how far out of round it is, how much, when I spin it, how much um, it goes up and down. And I'm also going to check for end play, how much it, it moves laterally, left to right. So I'm going to get these teeth pulled off of here so we can measure the plate itself. All right, here it is all stripped down. When I welded these hubs to the uh, plate, I slid a piece of key stock in the shaft here. So each of the hubs was keyed to the shaft. So I can put a key in from each direction. Obviously there won't be one under the cutting head itself, but the whole thing is three and a half inches wide. So I will have three inches of key in total um, holding this thing in place. I don't think I'm gonna shear that much off. I don't know, with this thing weighing 20 pounds, that might be too much force for this. Then again, it does have uh, two grub screws in each side. So that'll help hold it, but who knows, we'll see. It's not the smoothest uh, surface finish on the edge of the disc here, which doesn't really make a difference to us. But you can see it goes from about zero is the maximum on that end, and it will drop all the way around to 30 on the other end. So we go between zero to 30 for one full revolution. So that would be 70 thousandths total, which I honestly don't think is too bad, considering the fact that this was not precision cut around the circumference for for this application. They just cut a round disc eight inches. If you look at it, you can see how rough this finish is. But, you know, like I said, that doesn't matter to us whatsoever, but that's what's making the needle jump so much is all these little lines and pits and whatever. Now you can see it's going from about uh, 85 to zero here, 85 to zero. So we've got about 15 thousandths of run out, a little bit less than that. But that seems pretty good to me. Um, run out, end play, whatever you want to call it, the left to right movement of this. So there you have it. We've got 15 thousandths of movement left to right and about 75 thousandths up and down. I'm very happy with that based on the fact we used a steel rule and a pencil to lay out these holes and put it on a drill press. It's not like we had a, a plasm table or anything fancy here. We, you know, we did this pretty old school. So I'm very happy with how this came out. Like I said before guys, sorry I didn't get much more than this done. I was hoping to get the whole frame built up, but like I said, I couldn't get my steel like I wanted. So this is all we have for now, but please subscribe, stick around for the next video, stay tuned, and I promise we'll get some work done on that one. Thanks.